Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Om Namo Bhagavate Naram Chaiva Narotamam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Pato Jaya Mudiraya Pato Jaya Mudiraya Nasta Prayeshu Vapadreshu Nasta Prayeshu Vapadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We are reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter Number 11, entitled Swayam Bhuvamanu advises Dhruva Maharaj to stop fighting, text number 8. Nasmat kuchitam tata. Nasmat kuchitam tata. Nasmat kuchitam tata. Nasmat kuchitam tata. Karmaitat. Karmaitat sadhikasitam. Karmaitat sadhikasitam. Vado yad upadevanam. Vado yad upadevanam.
not act like this. A sadhu is a simply devotee and he is not supposed to kill animals unnecessarily. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chastur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manopistam Sapitam Yena Kutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Pandeyam Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shara Shri Rupam Sarajatam Sahagana Yoganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sarvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakha Nikamscha He Krishna Karna Sindhu Dhina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tata Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vamchakalpa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasali Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I'll just read the verse again. One should not accept the body as the self and thus like the animals kill the bodies of others. This is especially forbidden by saintly persons who follow the path of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Swami Bhubamanu is instructing Dhruva Maharaj because Dhruva Maharaj had been engaged in the wholesale slaughter of many yakshas. The yakshas are living entities just as we are living entities. The yakshas also are living entities. They're part of the creation of the Lord and they have a right to live without being uh, persecuted unnecessarily. So Dhruva Maharaj was making war against the yakshas because his, his brother had been killed by a yaksha. It was an isolated incident that Dhruva Maharaj's brother Uttama had gone into the forest and somehow he had an encounter with the yaksha and the yaksha killed him. The yaksha is very, they're powerful people. They have power, so it happened that one of them killed this brother of Dhruva Maharaj. So when that happened, Dhruva Maharaj made war against them and he was fighting with them and it was a great battle because the Yakshas, had, they were using their mystic power to fight back. Anyway, Dhruva Maharaj was winning and he was killing a lot of people. But then Swayam Bhuva Manu, who is the grandfather of Dhruva Maharaj, he appeared. Swayam Bhuva Manu is one of the sons of Lord Brahma. And Swayam Bhuva Manu had two sons, uh, Uttanapada and Priyavrata. Right. So those were the two sons. So we are hearing about the Dhruva Maharaj, who is the son of Uttanapada. And it's described how Dhruva Maharaj 
after he'd become the king, after he's, he'd, he'd gone in as a young boy into the forest at the age of five, he'd gone into the forest and he, in six months, he was able to have darshan to meet with the Lord. And if the Lord told him that in the future you're going to rule a planet, you're going to go to the pole star. The pole star is sometimes called Dhruva Loka because Dhruva Maharaj resides there. So you can see the pole star in the night, you see it's always in the same position, doesn't move. All the other planets are moving around. The sun is moving, one, the moon is moving, the different stars and constellations, they're all moving. But the pole star stays in that one place and everything is rotating around the pole star. So Dhruva Maharaj was told that in the future you can go there and that will be your abode. Anyway, Dhruva Maharaj had, was only a young boy when he was told that, so he wasn't go, it wasn't going to happen immediately. So he went home and then his father, after in course of time, his father gave the kingdom to Dhruva Maharaj, put Dhruva on the throne, and that was when his brother was killed, and Dhruva Maharaj retaliated against the Yakshas. So, Swayambhuvamano is not satisfied because he feels that Dhruva Maharaj has exceeded what was necessary. He'd given too much punishment. One Yaksha had killed his brother, and Dhruva Maharaj was taking revenge against all the yakshas. So Swami Bhuvaman was telling him that this kind of behavior, this is not good for our family name, right? The family name, the reputation is very important. The elders in the family are always concerned like that. They want to see the good name for their family. It means a lot to them. Although our birth in the family is only temporary, but still we're very attached to the bodily conception of life. And we think if we can have a good name for our family, then our life is successful. So, Swayambhuvamano is pointing out to Dhruva Maharaj that you should behave more like a sadhu. Sadhu meaning a saintly person. Actually, Dhruva Maharaj was a sadhu because without being a sadhu, he could never have had that meeting with the personality of Godhead. The Lord came riding on the back of Garuda and met Dhruva Maharaj, when Dhruva Maharaj's meditation was successful. It took Dhruva Maharaj six months to perfect his meditation. But he did severe austerities, he did very powerful practice to get that blessing. And when the Lord came, then the Lord told Dhruva Maharaj, he told him that you're going to have to rule the world for 36,000 years. You're going to have to be the ruler. So, not a joke. <laughs> you can imagine, just to be the temple president here, you could imagine the headaches you have. You know? So if you have to rule the world, you have to rule something. 36,000 years, you could imagine all the problems you must have to face from time to time. Of course, you could say, well, it's enough time to get everything together, get everything nice and make it come good for everyone. But it's not just make it nice, it keep it nice. That's a difficult thing. Just like building the temple and opening the temple, that is easier than maintaining the temple. The maintenance is the most difficult thing. And that is why Lord Vishnu maintains the universe. Brahma creates and Vishnu does the maintenance. 
though we are hearing about Swami Rupa Mahārāja, how he is directing Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj is, uh, you know, he, he got very angry against the Yakshas and they had a great battle at times. But Dhruva Maharaj was always able to come out victorious because he is a devotee. And the Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita, Yatra Yogeshwaro Karto, Yatra Yogeshwaro Krishna, Yatra Parto Danur Dara, Tatra Sri Vijayo Bhutir, Prabha Nitir Matir Mana. Wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mistakes, and Arjuna, the expert bowman, there will be four things victory, morality, extraordinary power, and opulence. So victory is assured for the devotee. You just have to persevere. Of course, there will be obstacles, there will be challenges, there will be difficulties, but one has to be convinced, one has to have faith. You have to go on and fight against the enemy, against the Maya. So Dhruva Maharaj did that. He fought the Yakshas and he defeated them. But Swayam Bhuva Mano, Jai, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, Radha, Krishna Kanaya, Gita. Dhruva Maharaj wanted to establish a kingdom. Certainly he did. He had a nice kingdom. He took over his father's kingdom. Uttanapada gave the kingdom to Dhruva Maharaj. And Dhruva Maharaj wants it to be peaceful. And he wants security for his citizens. It's the duty of the Kshatriya. Dhruva Maharaj is a Kshatriya. He's not a Brahmana. He's a Kshatriya. The son of a king. And it's the duty of the Kshatriyas to give protection. They have to protect the citizens. Just like when you have a temple, to be, to be in charge of the temple, you have to take care of the devotees. There are so many responsibilities there. Or maybe you have a herd of cows. You have to look after your cows. You have to make sure the cows are happy, the cows are fed, they're getting enough water to drink, and they have to also be kept clean. The cows are domestic animals. They need us, they need the human beings to take care of them. And we need the cows. So there's a reciprocation there. So Dhruva Maharaj, as a Kshatriya king, he was duty-bound to protect the citizens. And that was why he made war against the Yakshas. However, Swayambhuva Manu is pointing out that his method of fighting against the Yakshas was not appropriate because only one Yaksha had killed his brother. But Dhruva Maharaj is blaming all the Yakshas and he's fighting the whole, all the Yaksha dynasty, all the race of Yakshas. So Swayam Bhuva Manu wants to stop Dhruva Maharaj. He wants Dhruva Maharaj to refrain from this. And he's reminding Dhruva Maharaj, he reminds him, first of all, you're born in this, our family, the family name very important, the reputation of the family. You know, often the elders will speak like that to the children and the grandchildren. You know, you're representing our family. It means a lot, the family tradition, the family culture. So that's one thing he's been pointing out. Now he's pointing out also about the bodily conception of life. But in the bodily conception of life, you think someone is your enemy. But that is not the mood of a sadhu. And Dhruva Maharaj is a sadhu. He is a kshatriya, but he is also a saintly person. So in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, there you can see Devahuti. 
Devahuti was in confusion, she was in, in anxiety because her husband, Kardama, had gone away. Husband had gone away and taken sannyas. And the wife was, we were, what to do? She was feeling the separation naturally. She'd been with her husband and they'd enjoyed together for some time and they had nine daughters and one son. So they had children, but the husband decided, now that the wife has a child, I can go. I can go, I'm going to leave her. Because earlier Kadama had been a brahmachari and he practiced very strict renunciation and austerity as a brahmachari. For 10,000 years he did Astanga Yoga, Pranayama for 10,000 years and then he got married. He accepted Devahuti as his wife. And then Devahuti, after some time, she wanted a child. And so they, they went off and they, they rejuvenated themselves and Kardama created the aerial mansion which could fly everywhere. So they went to places of enjoyment, places where the demigods go to enjoy. Just like in the material, just like here, where do people go when they want to enjoy? They will go Cameron Highlands. <laughs> and King Highlands. Uh, again, King Highlands, yeah. Or maybe they'll go to Langkawi, uh, these kind of places. They go some kind of place to enjoy, you know. The mood is for enjoyment, for sense gratification. And uh, so Kadama Muni and Devahuti went to enjoy. They went to Mount Meru, where the demigods go to enjoy. And they enjoyed for a long time. And then they, they had the children. And then Kadama said, now I can go. He said, I've done my duty. My duty is over. Now I can go. And so Kadama Muni left Devahuti. So Devahuti had her son. They got the daughters married. All the women had to get married. And the, 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 the nine daughters were all married. They were all given to nine sages. And Devahuti was left with her son. And of course she was fortunate that her son was no ordinary son, but he was an incarnation of this personality of Godhead. He was Kapila. And so Devahuti was inquiring for, from her son. Lord Brahma had told her earlier, Lord Brahma, he's the father, Swanguga Manu. And so he was the grandfather. So Lord Brahma had told Devahuti, you will have a child who will be the incarnation of the personality of Godhead. So you can be guided by him, he can enlighten you. So Devahuti approached her son Kapila and she asked her son that how can I get relief from the, this material atmosphere, this consciousness that I'm thinking I'm a woman, I'm in the bodily concept of life. How can I get rid of that concept? And Lord Kapila tells his mother, instead of being attached to the man who you thought was your husband, you have to become attached to a sadhu. You have to become attached to the saintly person. And then Lord Kapila went on to describe how to recognize the saintly person. What is the qualities? of the saintly person. And that's where you have the verse, uh, Tatikshava Karunika Suridam Sarvadehinam Ajata Shatrava Shantu Sadhava Sadhu Bhushana. So Lord Kapila describes the ornaments, Sadhu Bhushana, the ornaments of the Sadhu. 
just like the women will decorate themselves with ornaments. The deities are dressed with ornaments. So the same way Asadu has also ornaments. But the ornaments are not just some decorate, some uh, jewel or something. The ornament are the qualities which he will display. So Titikshava, tolerance, and Titikshava, karunika, mercy. The, the sadhu has to tolerate a lot of difficulties. Just like Haridash Thakur was a great sadhu. He tolerated being beaten in the mar 22 marketplaces. And Lord Jesus Christ was also sadhu, that he tolerated being crucified. Lord Nityananda tolerated being struck on the head by the drunkard. Jaghai and Madhai, they attacked him and hit him with the wine bottle and drew blood from his head. Lord Nityananda tolerated. So it is the business of the sadhu that he is tolerant. He, does, he will put up with these kind of difficulties. He understands that this is the nature of the... Sometimes people think, oh, people today are so bad. How can we preach? Nobody's interested. Everybody's a demon. All demonic people. But... We shouldn't think like that. We should think because they are fallen, that's why we have to preach. And we have to preach more vigorously. And we have to be more concerned how to deliver the fallen souls. Not that we think, oh, they're so, they're so fallen, I won't bother to preach. No point to preach. I'm not going to go for sanctity. Lord Nityananda went to the most sinful people. That is preaching. Prabhupada went to the most sinful place, New York. The most hellish place, horrible place, the rotten apple. They call it the big apple, it's the big rotten apple. Such a horrible place. So Prabhupada went there and he picked the most fallen place, the Lower East Side. The Lower East Side, Prabhupada went to this area where people were all living in the street and they were drunkards and drug addicts and it was so degrading. And Prabhupada went there to preach he, and he, he got success, he found people. So, as devotees, you know, we also have to be uh, more bold like that. We have to have that boldness to go forward, to go there, to go to these places and try to give Krishna consciousness. Of course, it won't be easy, but we have to have faith. And so devotees will take on these th things. But Prabhupada, Prabhupada was talking to, to devotees about going to places to preach and the devotees were saying to Prabhupada, they said, oh Prabhupada is very, very degraded, is very fallen, I don't think it would be any good. Prabhupada said, yeah, it was also degraded and very fallen when I went there also. But you shouldn't think because it's all very fallen, very degraded, that we won't go there. Raj devotee will go everywhere. We have to go everywhere to give Krishna consciousness. We don't think who's qualified and who's not. The Panchatattva distributed Krishna consciousness indiscriminately. They did not make distinction who is qualified and who is not. Young men, old men, women and children, everyone is qualified for the mercy of the Panchatattva. So the sadhu will think like that, Tatikshava, tolerant and karunika, merciful. 
That he sees the Lord in the hearts of all living entities. He can see Krishna there in the heart of all living entities. So he's willing to go and try to give them Krishna consciousness, to let them hear the holy name and to distribute prasada and to introduce our philosophy to them. Uh, Dhruva Maharaj is being reminded about this by Swayambhuvamanu that Dhruva Maharaj due to his attachment to his own brother he had killed so many yakshas so he was thinking the yakshas are my enemy now Prahlad Maharaj was also telling his father Haranyakashipu that we should not think of anyone as the enemy. One who is a devotee of the Lord, he does not have any enemy. Maharaj Yudhisthira did not have any enemies. Although somebody may think we are their enemy, we don't think they are our enemy. They may think we are the enemy, but that's their thinking, that's their ignorance. We should not be in that ignorant condition. We should see that they are also spiritual beings. They are also spirit souls, part and parcel of Krishna. And we need to awaken them out of their ignorance. So seeing Krishna in the hearts of all living entities is another qualification of the sadhu. Just like we were talking how Magrari he would not even step on the little insects because he knows they are also living entities. So devotees have respect for all life. It was uh, Prabhupada went to this uh, San Fran uh, no it was in Australia a Franciscan monastery. They were followers of St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis was a, a Christian who promoted vegetarianism. Vegetarianism is in the Old Testament, in the Bible. In the New Testament, you know, there's the two books, the Old Testament and the New... In the Old Testament, they speak about vegetarian food. But in the New Testament, it's a little different. They changed it, they edited it. Anyway, St. Francis was a Christian saint and he was a vegetarian and he used to speak to the flowers. My dear sister flower, my dear brother tree, he saw all living entities in that way, like his brothers and sisters. And when Prabhupada heard this, Prabhupada said, oh, said, that is real God consciousness. Seeing God in all living entities, even in the flowers, in the plant. So that when we grow flowers, we also pluck the flowers because the perfection of the flower is when we offer them to Krishna. We pick the flowers to offer to Krishna. The same way we take the vegetables because we're offering them to Krishna. We're using them for the satisfaction of the Lord. And in this way, the plants and the vegetables, their lives are successful when they are offered to the Lord. And that guarantees they'll be elevated to the higher form of life. So the sadhu thinks like that. He thinks about the welfare of all living entities. He will not kill any living entity unnecessarily. So killing animals, of course, is not encouraged. Devotees don't like to see animals killed. And especially it's very bad to kill the cows, because the cow is the mother. One of the seven mothers which we have. So we have to respect the mother. Everything coming from the cow is valuable. 
The cow stew is a valuable fuel and it is antiseptic. If you have some infection, some pro you can put cow dung on, it's antiseptic, it will have a healing effect. People don't know, they go to doctors, so they buy costly ointments and things. Actually, you could just take the gifts of nature there, the cow dung, and you put the cow dung on the skin and it will heal very nicely. It happened one time in New Vrindavan, the devotees were there in New Vrindavan, you know, a very countryside place, so there were some bees. And so a couple of devotees, they got stung by these bees. So one devotee, he said, oh, I'm going to go to the doctor. And he, they got a car, he drove all the way into the town and found the doctor and get some med costly medicine and he had to go back in a few days. And, you know, the treatment he got from the doctor was, was taking time to heal. But the other devotee said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. He said, I'll just put some cow dung on it. And he put some cow dung on the insect bite, the, the wasp bite, and very quickly he healed. But the other devotee went to the doctor, it took days to recover. It cost so much money. The other devotee went, just used cow dung, didn't spend any money, got better quickly. So that's just one example. You can use cow dung. Cow dung, cow urine. Very valuable medicine, good for the liver. You drink some cow urine, it's very good for health. Oh, I don't like, oh, it's not a nice taste. You know. We want sugar, we want sweet. We don't like to drink the cow dung, but the cow dung, the cow urine, very good. And there are so many things you can make from the cow urine and in India they're selling these different products from the cow. Toothpaste and soap and different medicines which are there. And then of course ghee. You want to do yagya, you have to have ghee. And where do you get ghee from? You get the ghee from milk. And milk is not goat's milk. We don't use goat's milk. We don't use camel's milk. We use, it has to be cow's milk. Sometimes people are very silly. They think, what's the difference? Goat's milk. Yeah, go ahead, drink it and see. No benefit. Just dull the brain. You become a dull goat. But you drink cow's milk. If you get a good brain, you can understand spiritual knowledge. So sadhus, they know the value of the different living entities and they're very careful to respect all forms of life. So Suri Damsadu Ajata Shatrava Shantu Sadhava Sadhu Bhushana the sadhu is that he, he knows the scriptures. He knows the teaching of the scriptures and he follows it. So sometimes people think, oh sadhu, that's someone with a big beard and long hair, and a big belly and red cloth. They think this is sadhu. They don't know what is really sadhu. Sadhu means you have to have the qualities of the sadhu. You have to see what is the behavior, what is the actions. In Bhagavad Gita also, Lord Arjuna inquired from Lord Krishna, Stita Pragnasya, Stita Pragnasya Kavasha Samadhi Stasya Keshava Stita Kim Prabhaseta Kim Asita Prajeta Kim. Arjuna is asking, what is the nature of one who has achieved transcendence? How does he speak and what is his language? How does he sit and how does he walk? Arjuna wanted to know how to recognize the 
person who is Sita Pragna, who is a sadhu, who is fixed in real knowledge. And so Lord Krishna describes Yadahati Yadakaman Sarvan Partam Manovitam is one who is actually in transcendental consciousness. He has no desire for sense gratification. He's, get, he's not attached to the objects of the senses. His mind finds satisfaction in the self alone. He doesn't look for satisfaction in the senses, but his satisfaction comes from within. So that is sadhu. So, uh, Swain Bhuvamanu knows actually Dhruva Maharaj is a sadhu and he wants to bring him, to awaken him back to his actual consciousness of being a sadhu, to remind him about his duty to behave properly. Just like sometimes as devotees, sometimes we get very carried away and we get, you know, overwhelmed by passion. So we need somebody to remind us, come on Prabhu, remember you're a devotee. You have to behave properly. Be nice to people, be respectful, offer respects. Amanina manadena kirtaniya sadahari. Offer all respects to others and don't be anxious to get respect yourself. That is sadhu. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has described sadhu in his Shukshastika. Tolerant like the tree and devoid of false ego. Right? Our ego should be in proportion to our physical dimension. Or rather our spiritual dimension. Our ego should not be in proportion to our physical dimension. Physical dimension, my ego, you know, whatever height you are, whatever weight you are, you have that ego. But our actual ego should be according to our spiritual dimension. What is your spiritual dimension, Janabe? Do you know? You don't know your spiritual dimension? I'm sure you do. Yeah? Yes. Right. Very good. One ten thousand of the tip of the hand. Very one hundred or one hundred of a tip of a hair, very small, that should be our ego. That is Sadhu. Hmm? That is Krishna consciousness. So Dhruva Maharaj is getting good instruction from Swami Bhuva Manu. Are there any questions? Hmm? Yes. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, when they say satisfaction in the self, does that mean also satisfaction in devotional service? Yes. If you're doing devotional service, you should be satisfied. The devotee is not satisfied by results, but by service. By service we're satisfied. The results may be there, may not. That is not the satisfaction. But the satisfaction comes in doing service. And you're satisfied to be engaged in service. And to have made the attempt to do service. The satisfaction in itself is certainly devotional service. Devotional service is performed in consciousness of our spiritual self. If it's actually devotional service, if it's pure devotional service, then we are understanding our, our spiritual self. And we are performing our service in that manner. Devotional service can be also influenced by the modes of nature. It can be in the mode of goodness, it can be in the mode of passion, it can be in the mode of ignorance. But if you want it to be self-satisfaction of the self, 
It must be pure devotional service. It must be done simply for the pleasure of Krishna. Yes? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, I saw in one article, one statement, Srila Prabhupada says, all devotees must respect Jesus Christ and Muhammad. But we understand Jesus Christ has been tolerating on the crucifixion everything. But Prophet Muhammad, he was giving a statement of, we must annihilate all the kafir and all this. So how do we take Prophet Muhammad into this kind of uh, consideration. Well, Prophet Muhammad, we know from the Quran that in the Quran, the Quran is speaking glorification of God, He's speaking to love God. So, in that way, in that sense, that he is glorifying the Lord, that he's thinking Prophet Muhammad also did great work to uplift people to bring people up to the platform of having faith in God, in religion. So that is a great work itself. You know, I don't know about, you say you told to kill everybody, I don't know about that part. I don't know if that's actually in the Quran. Never heard of this. Could it be from Prophet Muhammad Maharaj? Uh, could it be from Prophet Muhammad like that? Who what? was the messenger of the Lord? Given in the Quran. Is it is the Quran messenger of the Lord? Well, I don't know. Just there's a lot of things which people put into these things. Yeah. See, this a, way. It has been adulterated much, Mara. Hmm? It has been adulterated much. Yeah. yeah. Because this kind of scriptures, these texts, they go through a lot of changes and the people put things and, in. And he has preached vegetarianism, Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, there are. There are Muslim Islamic people who are vegetarian. It's certainly there. The one, there's one man, I was in Calcutta, I met this one man, he was a teacher. In a, in a Christian college, and he was a Muslim himself, an Indian man, he was a Muslim, and he wrote a book about the Quran and the Bhagavad Gita, and he showed the parallels between the two texts. And he was a vegetarian, his whole family were vegetarian. Although they were Islamic, they were a strict vegetarian. And he, shows the relation that the Gita and the Quran the te teaching messages the same and so many things. Prabhupada was in Tehran. He was in Tehran and uh, he could hear them reading the Quran. And so Prabhupada asked one of the local devotees, he said, what are they saying? And when the, when the man translated it all, Prabhupada said, yeah, he said, he, it's the same as our Bhagavad Gita. It's the same message. So there are many, many, many similarities. But sometimes people put sectarian ideas into these things, you know? Like things like, you know, people become fanatical and talk about killing everybody who doesn't surrender. But that is not necessarily the mood. Yeah, we are following Prabhupada's uh, teaching, Prabhupada's books, and Bhagavad Gita also adulterated by many people. But those who are reading Bhagavad Gita, following Prabhupada's advice, books and everything, 100% looks like very calm, peaceful, do not disturb others and all kind of things. Whereas when we look into the Quran, even though it is a change, whatever it is, majority, 99.99% is behaving in a direction and telling to us you are kafir, you are not respecting my Allah, I need to kill. That kind of statement is coming up very strongly. So does that mean Prophet has given the word kafir for demons or non-believers of Islam? Well, 
Well, I think you're making very big uh, generalizations here to say 99% like that, you know, I mean, I don't know how true that can be, you know. I mean, Prabhupada said himself, the Islamic people and the Hindu people, they live together for many years together. They live together with each other side by side and there was no problem. But the problems were created by politicians. You get politicians who stir things up. People and they influence the minds of the innocent people. So, generally, people can, you know, people will, they may be of different tastes, but they can live together. And there's a need for people who have faith in God, no matter what their religion, what their faith is, there's a need for them to come together and to come out and to chant the holy name. So, we have to see the good things, you know, you talking about all this and the people want to kill everybody and that. You know, that is fanatical people, but not everybody is like that. Most people are God-loving, they're peaceful, they just want a peaceful life, they just want to live here in this world and have their family and, and live peacefully and do their work and just be happy. They don't want to go around killing everybody. There's only a few mad people like that who are fanatic. <laughs> but that's not the general mode. Myers. Thank you. Maharaj, you see the deities get reflected on the floor. Is it an offense to step on them? Yes. I'm told that Krishna is everywhere, so not, those who are not aware, aware of it will step on it. Well, Maybe you should adjust the lighting so that there's no reflection on the floor. The problem is the lighting. But definitely we shouldn't be standing on Krishna. But some or other Guru Maharaj said that what we can see, we almost uh, Hurting Krishna, or uh, I don't know what kind of word we know we use, blaspheming you are. But our consciousness is very pure, we want to be very submissive, true devotee of Krishna and everything. In between, we are doing so many things ignorantly that could be hurting Krishna. How do we take it on that context? It could be hurting Krishna? Yeah, because there are so many, like what Mataji says, they are stepping on the floor, but cannot be avoided. Uh, not, during the not, festival, in, big uh, lights, everybody uh, walking here and there. Intention. But, uh, we, our desire is to serve Krishna and uh, the, the fear and everything is there. Would that be... Uh, well, if you have the desire to serve Krishna, that's the main thing. Certainly Krishna knows that. Krishna knows what is the mood, what is the mood of the devotee. So, Krishna will tolerate. If the devotee has that sincere desire, he just wants to serve Krishna. That's the main thing. Krishna knows our heart. Guru Maharaj, could you explain what is meant by tolerance and what is not tolerance, so we can understand? What is meant by tolerance? Well, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes heat and cold and happiness and distress. We should tolerate them without being disturbed. Right? And so tolerance means to put up with some kinds of inconvenience. Things, sometimes things are not very convenient, not very pleasing. And Prabhupada gives examples. He talks about cooking in the summer when it's very hot. So to go into the kitchen and cook, 
it's not very comfortable. Yeah, it's not very pleasing. It's that not something you really want to do, you know. Oh, it's so hot. I have to go in the kitchen. I have to stand over the hot stove. Oh, you know, not everybody wants to do it. But mother will do it because she has to cook for her family. And similarly, taking bath in the winter. They take bath in the winter, not everywhere do they have hot water. But still you take bath, even though there's no hot water. And still you take bath. Just like if you go to Kumbha Mela. If you go to the Kumbha Mela, it's in the month of Mark. Means January, mid-January to mid-February. It's the coldest time of the year. So if you go to the Kumbha Mela and you're camping, out there at the Kumbha Mela and you have to go, the, the auspicious time comes, you know, you go into the Yamuna and take bath there. The Ganga and the Yamuna, you go in there and you take your bath. You don't think, oh, oh, it's so cold. No, you, you don't think about it, you just go in there, you know. And so similarly, you have to serve the deities, you have to do your puja. You have to take bath. It's cold, but you tolerate a little inconvenience. So that is tolerance. You put up with the things which are not so pleasing to our minds and senses. So tolerant, be tolerant. And sometimes we have to tolerate the difficulties which come. People may abuse us and say nasty things. And Oh, you Hare Krishna, you people, you're always coming, disturbing us. You're always coming, begging money from us and this and that. You know, oh my goodness, you people, uh, you know, like that. So you have to tolerate the sometimes harsh words, unkind words, words which are not very pleasing. But devotee will tolerate that for the higher purpose. The higher purpose being for the service of Krishna. So that is tolerance. We will put up with the difficulty. So, waking up early in the morning, oh, especially in the winter, you don't want to get up in the morning, but we will do it because it's purifying. And Krishna wants to see us at the Mongol Arti. Krishna wants to see us there in the temple. So Krishna is pleased when he sees the devotees are there. The devotee will tolerate a little inconvenience for the pleasure of Krishna. So we are cultivating that tolerance. Other part? Okay, so we will stop here. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam, Jai. 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 So there will be a program to the next time and Maha later and then Maharaj will be going to Balakar at the end.